Hi, good afternoon. Chairman Parker, members of the board, and Commissioner Mercer and DEP staff. Uh, my name is Rob Wood. I'm a policy associate with the Nature Conservancy in Maine. It's nice to meet you, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, comment before uh, the board today on the proposed Chapter 200 rules. Um, the Nature Conservancy is a science-based international nonprofit organization dedicated to conserving the lands and waters on which all life depends. We work in 50 states and in 69 countries, and we're supported by more than 1 million members. And we've been working here in Maine for 58 years. Uh, we own and manage some 300,000 uh, acres of land, which makes us the 12th largest landowner in the state. And we also work to protect uh, streams and rivers and other waterways um, to support healthy fish populations that are important to local communities and to, to fishermen. Um, and as an organization, uh, the Nature Conservancy has been working to ensure that when mining is conducted in states where we work and in countries where we work, that mining is appropriately cited uh, and that appropriate safeguards are in place. And so the first thing we'd like to say today is that we do appreciate the time spent and the hard work uh, that has gone into revising these rules. Uh, and we do believe that they are an improvement over the 2014 provisionally adopted rules. Um, specifically, we appreciate that you've strengthened the monitoring requir requirements, as Mr. Bennett uh, from NRCM has mentioned. We also appreciate that you added definitions for monitoring and for performance-based standards, and that you changed the definition of perpetual treatment to mean 10 years post-closure instead of 30 years. Um, so we do appreciate those changes. However, the Conservancy continues to have concerns with the proposed rules as written, and we believe these concerns are sufficiently important that the rules not be adopted at this time. So we have a full list of suggested changes in our written testimony, which I'll submit electronically, uh, but I'll focus in on the one that we believe is, is most important uh, today, which is the mine citing, mine citing language in Section 20B. And simply put, we think this language is too vague and has too many inconsistencies, and we believe this, this section should be rewritten to be clear about where mining is allowed. And so, as mentioned, Section 20B3 prohibits removal of ore in on or under great ponds, rivers, brooks, and streams, and coastal wetlands, which is a provision that the Conservancy strongly supports. Um, we do believe that, uh, that one of Maine's highest priorities should be protection of our, of our waterways. However, Section 20B4 directly contradicts Section 20B3 allowing mining in on or under certain rivers and great ponds and other areas containing waterways and bodies of water with the approval of another state or federal agency. It also suggests that if another agency were to allow mining in one great pond, that mining might be allowed in all great ponds at that point. The language there is a little bit inconsistent. And so we encourage the department to address these inconsistencies and to be explicit about where mining is and is not allowed. We think it's important for folks who are reading the rules to understand where mining uh, should be allowed to take place. And if there were questions beyond that, those questions could be addressed outside of the rules. But the rules themselves should be clear about where mining is and is not allowed. So again, we believe the draft rules are an improvement over the 2014 rules, and we thank you for your time to make these improvements. However, uh, we do urge the board to make changes to the citing section uh, and additional changes that we will include in our written comments. Um, and I'll, again, thank you for your time and I'll let you know that I'm available for any questions. I would remind my students that ore bodies or geology is where nature put it. And so with regard to these rules, we are technically looking for metal um, for, and it's kind of basically, we're looking mostly in the old ancient volcanogenic environments that Maine uh, was in hundreds of millions of years ago. But there are many locations in Maine where there are ore bodies that we don't know where they are. So a little problem of where, I can say if we're looking just at Bald Mountain for one example, where would we put the, the, the X marks the spot and where we do the mining area? But if you're looking for a potential mining areas, short of trying to do work for explorationists or others who would be interested to know where there may be metal deposits that they could try to ask, uh, make a permit for or not, we just don't know. We can't really say on, in a general pattern where the mining areas are going to be. 
there are, there's, there's metal out there of, of various varieties, gold and otherwise. Um, I still like everything that you just had to say, basically, and you, you caught right up very quickly with what our new changes, the DEP new changes have been on here, and you've stated uh, your thoughts about that very nicely, I think. But I'm a little concerned about trying to say where we are actually going to put a mining area when we just looking at mining rules in general at this point. Sure, and thanks, Mr. Eastler. I would say to that that I'm not suggesting, the Nature Conservancy is not suggesting that you know, there, we create a map that shows exactly where mining is and is not allowed. We're talking about uh, talk, we're talking about the specific prohibitions on certain areas, and specifically in or on, in on or under the waterways listed in Section B, Section 20B3. Uh, and we do feel that, based on uh, Title 12, Section 549C, that the department does have jurisdiction uh, if it would like to prohibit mining as a blanket statement in, on, or under those water, waterways and water bodies, um, regardless of what lands they happen to, 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 to fall on. All right, thank you.